Good afternoon. Welcome back to Brace of and Proud of It. Uh, Cling Spores, Woodworking Shop, Woodworking Extravaganza, virtual. I'm Mike Z. I'm Chris. And today for the one o'clock hour, we're going to be talking about Cling Spore abrasives in general, especially Cling Spore Abrasives USA. Hey, Mike, before we get started, we uh, have to give a shout out to our boss, Coleman. Uh, he brought us food. Yep. We said we'd <clears throat> shout out. So there's your shout out. Coleman. We're not liars. We also have plenty of apples. So let's take a look at what we got. Well, that's right. There's absolutely no audio. I forgot. That's My apologies. Okay. So this is the Kling Spore plant in Hickory, North Carolina. Uh, those are solar panels on the roof. It is a solar powered facility um, and it has its own pond. But let's see, this has been there since, what was it? I believe that particular building, the original building, which is uh, on the far end, started, if yeah. I'm not mistaken, it was back in like 1975-ish. Well, I know they came over about that time. Christoph Klingspor came over. He's the grandson uh, for Klingspor Abrasives in Germany. And he came over about in the 70s to get started here. And then I think they moved to this building in the uh, 80s because I know the newer edition it was in 96 and that was the shipping and warehouse location yeah they started in just a little warehouse in their original and they were there just a couple years then they got this uh, land and facility there absolutely so let's continue <clears throat> uh, but it does house its own daycare for the employees called the sandbox and it's not just some place it they actually it's a nice four-star facility they've really done it up well yeah that guy looks familiar so that is Nick, one of the technical guys. Uh, Klingsport does have training for all of its sales reps that they bring them out to the Hickory location uh, prior to 2020. And right now we're doing all virtual training, but all of the tech department, including myself, uh, get together and we try to help educate all of the new sales reps. And just some of the product line that they offer, obviously, is sanding discs. We're all more than familiar with those. And uh, there's quite a range, different applications, different uh, options available. And certainly, you know, we try to dial that in uh, since there are so many options to specifically whatever you're working on. So as you can tell, there was wood. There was different species of wood. Uh, also, they have Corian counter countertops, solid surface. Uh, so <clears throat> we have it optimized for several different applications. That's why there's so many abrasives that is offered by Klingsport. Yeah, and uh, the unique thing about some of the way it is is if you've got a 5-inch 8-hole or a 5-inch 9-hole or a 6-inch whatever, 11-inch whatever, whatever your machine is, we can cut and punch and fix those discs for you. It's PSA, hook and loop, got you covered. So now we're taking a look at Danny in the te technical department. He is in charge of the metal, and here's the ultra-thin cutoff wheels. They're very thin wheels. Yeah, traditionally, if you're going to do a lot of grinding or cutting, the cutoff wheels are what you're going to need to do that slicing of that material. And also, I want to cover one thing, and that is the OSA certified certification for bonded products. What that basically means is that in Europe, they have an entire collection of abrasive manufacturers that get together and make sure everyone's making abrasives to a certain spec, expiration dates, certain types of temperatures that the glues can take, the fiberglass that's in them. There's a lot that goes behind it. So if you do not have a date or an OSA certification on your grinding disc, you could be operating a very dangerous grinding disc. You know, some of that certification, you know, includes, for instance, if you have a uh, maximum RPM of whatever or, you know, a, a maximum of something else, it has to not only meet that amount, but go at least 20 percent beyond that. So it ensures that no matter what you've got stated on there, that you've got that that buffer uh, to, for your protection, the customer. All right. <clears throat> and grinding discs obviously are different than cutoff wheels because you're actually going to grind with them, not cut. And the same thing as far as the, uh, you know, there's a certain angle you use those at, which would be helpful. Uh, rather than just straight down on it. Uh, but there are different applications and different ways that grinding discs are produced. And our extras are kind of more the economical side of things. 
um, that will do a quick grind, but they aren't made to last a long time where the Supra does a little bit slower of a grind, but lasts a lot longer. It has a higher RPM. And then the special sort of a, a, a not another option in regards to what they offer there as well. Ooh, the flap disc. One of the things that was invented by Klingspor in the 50s. And uh, most people are more familiar with these in the metal market. But believe it or not, these some of those do very, very well on wood. If you're trying to shape a piece of wood, but you don't want to go so heavy that you're grinding on it. Uh, also, where you need a little more aggression than just a normal sanding disc. Those are phenomenal. Yep. So if you use any kind of power carving apparatuses and you want to smooth out those carbide uh, grooves that are left by them, this is one of those areas that you can do it. Also, this is the quick change flap disc. It's a, a proprietary product to cling spore abrasives. You simply put on the, uh, the, the pad on the back. It's like, I think we sell for five bucks. Uh, and then all of the quick change discs just simply snap on. You don't have to do anything with taking off the bit or, uh, the wrench, getting any of that out. It's just a quick and easy way. <clears throat> now, next is the trimmable flap disc. This is the new Titan that just came out earlier this year from Klingspor Abrasives. This is the only downside with the flap disc was is that as you were using it, it rounded over uh, as you were using it. So you kind of lost that crisp edge. It started to glaze over. So what they've come up with is a way to actually trim it to reveal a fresh edge every time. And all you have to do is simply put it on something that's a hard steel. And as you can see here, it'll start wearing off the plastic so you can reveal better flap edge wear. And those are available in the common uh, aluminum zirconia as well as the ceramic. Oh, the belts, baby. We've got belts. Let me tell you, they work hard on belts. Lately, I've had to loosen a notch on mine. <laughs> so the uh, CS311 is probably the most widely used uh, abrasive material that Klingspor manufactures. It's an open coat. It has what's called ACT, and that's advanced coating technology. And what that does, it gives you better edge wear, more grain exposure, and a harder grinding type of applications. Uh, so therefore, you'll see it in our portable belts that we have just the regular sanding belts as well in our premium line. Then you'll also see them in our wide belts. And most people don't think about, you know, checking with us for wide belts, but we got got a good option there. Yep. Ah, the pump sleeve. So <clears throat> we have, uh, with Klingspore's Woodworking Shop and Klingspore Braces, we made a five-part series on just the pump sleeve and the pump drum because we get a lot of questions on this, how to measure it, how, you know, what's the best one for my application. They're constantly breaking. What can I do? So if you want to definitely check out on the YouTube channel for Clean Sport Abrasives USA, the five part series, it's about two minutes of video, just kind of give you an idea of how to use them and what to look for. Uh, but pump sleeves are coming back in style and they're a fantastic operation for contour sanding. If you have large production type things to do. Yeah, and who's that uh, sexy beast there sanding on that pump sleeve drum? I don't know about all that, but that would be myself. Oh, cool. So belts aren't also just for the, the wood market. Obviously, we have metal belts as well, ceramic, aluminum zirconia, silicon carbide. And if you didn't know, silicon carbide is actually made for the glass industry, but it does a fantastic job of finishing, high polishing on your steels and stuff like that, like tool steels, knife steel. Uh, and and operate uh, applications like that. Also, and and oh. it is uh, familiar. Most, most people are familiar with that in the auto body industry, but they also make it in those belts as well. Check out the router bits. One of my favorites. And we've got router bits for your, you know, whether you're looking for something for wood, plastic, um, aluminum. And a variety of other applications. We've got a lot of router bits that we can take care of before there. CNC or hand router, flush trim, all sorts of different applications. Just give us a shout if you got something cool or unique you're trying to do, and we'll help you out. And also, they're made in the USA. These are not imported bits. These are all made here in North Carolina and some in New York. <laughs> Oh, what about the sanding stars, flap wheels, and sanding mops? This has become a very big uh, product line for us. There you see the Mac mop. 
Uh, the Mac mop is originally made um, not for, but use with uh, high contour things like baseball bats, uh, outside exteriors of pipes. What else can you think of? That's, it you know, works great. Furniture well. parts, chair parts, uh, anywhere where you've got a significant contour or variation in, in the material uh, dimensions, the Mac mop gets in there and really kind of tidies that up. And you see from the video there that the Mac mop was on a, um, on a ball door motor. Uh, we also make one that is spindle mounted that you can put into your drill press. Thank you very much for that comment there, Chris Cross. Yeah, you got it. You got it. Well, and then here is the, this is one of my favorite products here, the flutter sheet or the sanding mop. Uh, these are absolutely in my shop. If I didn't have those, that would be a ton more hand sanding than what I have to do. I do a lot of CNC work and a lot of different weird contours and shapes. And I use these on nearly every project that comes off my machine. Uh, they're so versatile, whether you're just trying to ease an edge, give it a little bit of a, a rough texture. Uh, no matter what you're trying to do, those little sand mops do well. If you're doing moldings or any kind of contours, those are go-to in my shop. Lots of applications. Now, one thing we will touch on when it comes down to them <clears throat> is if you're used to using a 120 grit sandpaper of, of any type, when you put it onto something that is made for contoured use, the abrasiveness is a little less aggressive because there isn't anything pushing the substrate in or the abrasive into the substrate, like any kind of force, because they're made to kind of flap and fall away from the work surface in order to give you a softer scratch. So if you are expecting yourself to get a 220 grit, do not expect it to act like a 220. It's actually going to act finer like a 320 just because of the nature of how that abrasive works. Yeah, and most of those mops, now the Mac mop, the abrasives do come where the grain is facing your workpiece and it slaps against the workpiece as it abrades through. The sanding stars and mops, on the other hand, that abrasive is coming in sideways. So the only thing that's hitting it is a gentle graze from the edge or the ends of the tips of the little fingers so different results um, the the sanding stars and mops are going to be a little more subtle whereas the mac mop might be just slightly more aggressive uh, in comparison so just kind of know what your applications are before you know if you got questions we can help dial you in on the right product absolutely Ooh, that's my favorite saw blade I'm sorry. It's out of all the ones I've tried. I, I like the combo the best. It's a good. <clears throat> and we also have uh, three videos from the reclaimed audio podcast that have made uh, using the combo blade and their different ways of doing it. Uh, and they were very impressed with how it worked. It's a good all around blade if you're just looking for one, but that's not the only blade we sell. No, not at all. We have double sided laminate, single sided laminate. We have miter blades, uh, some of the best out there. So there's a lot of options in our blade lineup, and they are all German manufactured. You could talk a little bit more about these since uh, that was your product line at one time. Yeah, German steel, German carbide. Definitely built well. So let's talk about the Sandflex box, because you'll find these in a lot of our competitor stores. The Sandflex block is a rubber impregnated with grain block. Um, it it is chemical resistant, water resistant, oil resistant, because a lot of those things do not permeate into rubber, uh, but it is fantastic for rust removal. It comes in three different grits, and let's check it out. Yeah, it's almost like a sponge pad and a block of rubber got together and had a baby. That would be what would be produced. And so they can be used with a lubricant or an oil if you want to, or a cleaner. It doesn't have to be used dry, but you can see here how easily they they work dry. And they're available in coarse, uh, medium, and fine. And uh, that rubber goes all the way through as well as the grit. So no matter how far you get down in there, you're always going to have grain. You're always going to have the rubber. You can cut them if you need just a little small block you wanted to throw in your toolbox. Or if you've got one of those blocks, you cut it in half, throw one in your toolbox for your shop, one in your boat, or wherever else you might have rust or uh, buildup that needs to be addressed. That's right. And then gardening tools is one of those things that you don't think about cleaning. And when you do, you don't really have anything to form to fit. So the uh, Sandflex block is very good for gardening tools and sporting goods like golf bases. Yep. Good addition. 
Let's talk about some frequently asked questions that we get. That's probably the number one question we get from people is what's the right disc for my product. So what we want to do is we want to cover some of the materials that we offer here at clean spores woodworking shop and what they're good for um, some of the applications and why you might choose one over the other. So let's take for instance, our AZ plus material PS 36 PS 36 is that material that if you need aggression, you need fast stock removal, and you need a pretty long life to it, then the AZ, the PS36, AZ Plus is the way to go. If you are planning on doing any kind of staining to go along with your project, then we highly recommend that you stop PS36 or the AZ before uh, you stain and change over to aluminum oxide because it's so aggressive in nature and long lasting that the scratch will show up when you go to stain. If it's bare wood, most of the time you won't see it, but when you stain, you'll definitely see it. So if you need uh, high stock removal, planing applications, Y belts where you need to do a lot of removal, drum sanders, we need to do a lot of removal. Anything in general where you need to remove a lot of stock, that's the material. Yep. Zerk for uh, that material for aggression, not for finish. Ooh, the new green tech. Yeah, this is a very unique product, and uh, it's unlike anything else on the market, literally. Yep. Um, it does have a sterate, but it has a special uh, proprietary sterate that's on there. And uh, it's unique to us. And what you'll find with that is it's available on a paper or a film back, depending on the grit that you choose. And it is aluminum oxide. And uh, very interesting how that... Um, how that coating is applied because it almost makes it where it, it nothing will bond to it. So if you're trying to sand something very resinous, it's not going to load. If you're trying to sand something that is a, uh, you know, like paint that typically is going to load up your abrasive badly, not going to load. It's yeah. like it just flies out. It works really good for a lot of uh, applications where it's gummy, uh, old finish, waxes, uh, gel coats, and even, you know, epoxy sanding. Everyone's doing the resin object of some sort and and a lot of times we kind of try to rush that project or it heats up under the sanding pressure so uh, what i found is an air hose compressed air blows the stuff right off of there for the most part you can keep using it so the longevity the service life of this is probably top-notch uh, company-wide in materials that's that's what i would say it's just, i've started switching everything over to this uh, from 80 grit up to 150 and then i switch over to ps 33 which will, should be next um but yeah, that, that coating on top of there is just hard to, to load. Speaking of the 33, this is what we call our sterate disc. The PS33 is another proprietary product to Kling Spore. Uh, what it is, is that it is a sterate coated, but the sterate isn't laid on top like other sterate discs in the industry. Instead, this one actually is built into the size coat. Yeah, so essentially it's not coated, it's impregnated. Yep, and which means that if you have water-based finishes, anything where fish eyes can be present, excuse me, in, um, in finishing, and that concern comes out because of the sterate, then this is what you want to use. And what makes that product very unique is is the fact that it does have that 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 design, and and with that being impregnated in it, that doesn't reduce the grain exposure that's available. Meaning you're going to get really long life out of that, and it's going to perform very very well over the long haul. And uh, that is a, a semi open coat, and uh, we'll talk a little more about what that means later. But that's pretty important too when it comes to choosing the braces for certain applications. The reason why this particular product, the PS33, is our probably our most well known, is that's a go to. It's fantastic for price point. It's really does really well for the um, for the finishing side of things. It's got a huge grit range. And it's available in all your common uh, hole patterns and sizes. So this right here is our, our has been the go-to forever and ever and ever. And years ago, I think it was uh, Fine Woodworking when they did their disc test. This came out uh, top of the heap. So yep. been mm -hmm. been that been at the top of the heap ever since. And there's been a few manufacturers that tried to bust it, but you probably don't hear of that product because it didn't work. 
Uh, but yeah, the 33 has been a longstanding, good go-to product for us. Uh, that's actually in 2000 when I started using cling spore abrasives. That was the first disc I was introduced to, and I hadn't gone back since, really. It's kind of our universal disc. Does yeah. a little bit of everything for everything. It's pro that's going to be the first disc I'm going to recommend to someone who's never tried anything cling spore, who hasn't had, had any, you know, knowledge of how the abrasives work with us is that just try the 33 our serrate discs give it a try first if there's something you need like more aggression then we have the 30 36 if loading seems to be more of an issue then of course you want to do the uh, green tech but the 33 is a great place to start and if you're coming over to us from a hardware store then even that will be hands down three times better than anything you'll buy at a hardware store yeah so, Gary, to answer your question there, I use 33 after 150. So, my 180, 220 on bare wood sanding, because you don't want to sand any finer than that on bare wood. I do the 33 just because I love the scratch pattern it gives before staining. So, then what's the 73 family? Well, the 73 family is literally a sterate coated product. As you can tell here from these cascade lines, that there's a sterate coating on top. If you have concerns of, of fish eyes being caused from sterate loading, um, you may want to go to the 33 instead. But if you're doing Corian, if you're doing anything that you have uh, loading to be an issue, the sterate helps resist loading and clogging. Yeah, definitely be used more in the higher grits, especially. So one thing we didn't cover on, on the green tech is the film back. The film back starts at 30 or sorry, 32 grit. 320 grit and higher all the way to 2000 you have a film and we also have a fp73 which is our film back material this here is a really hard tear resistance um it, it's literally almost impossible to tear it is wet dry applications ultra thin for your finishing applications um as far as if you want the flattest finish you can get in an aluminum oxide this is a great choice yeah what makes that really work really well with the film products is anything that's film backed yeah, that means the product is waterproof. Um, typically, the only other way you're going to get a waterproof is if it specifically has a waterproof uh, coating applied to it, which usually only occurs in the automotive side of things, or if it's a, um, a polyester-backed product. But in the paper realms, um, the, the FP73 is the way to go. That is That works really well for a variety of different applications, and uh, that film is amazing. Yep. It's a three mil, right? That one is. So the PS22 is a disc that we offer. Um, it's pretty much, uh, it, it's more for the metal side of things or the really fine grits that we carry here. Um, but it's a good all around disc, good price point. Yeah, we don't sell a whole lot of that over here on our side. We, we typically lean people towards the PS29 or our heavyweight material. Which is coming up uh, just because it's more aimed at the wood market. But the PS11 is our standard wet, dry sandpaper. Uh, been around for almost 100 years now. Uh, there's been some reiterations of it, but the the silicon carbide is kind of one of those things that Klingspore first made for the auto industry, and then it's widely used everywhere now. Uh, but it's a closed coat, consistent scratch. The thing about silicon carbide is that it is friable, and that friability means that it remains sharp as you're using it. So if you have like, let's say this table here and you wanted to sand 220 on this side and be 220 on that side, silicon carbide in between coats of finish, not bare wood, uh, will give you that consistency. The thing that a lot of manufacturers won't tell you, and we're glad you're watching us live as we tell you this, light pressure will go a long way with silicon carbide. And heavy pressure will go about that far. Yeah. So if you have a rubber block and you're out in the industry and you're wet, dry sanding something and you push down with that block to hold the sandpaper in place, you've pretty much broken off most of that grain because it's such a hard, brittle grain. Yeah, it is the hardest grain that uh, that's available, the hardest mineral next to diamond. But it sadly, it's also the most brittle. So at the same time. Yep. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, Gary, yes, this will be saved in all of our lives in the future. So therefore, all of the abrasive and proud of it lives will be covered. Um, also, Chris and I made a abrasive disc video, which we will cover that as well. Yep. On to the show.
But yeah, wet, dry, stability, and extended service life under light pressure. That's the key. Yep. A lot of people know that as auto paper. That's right. So what about ClingNet? You tell me about ClingNet. Okay. So imagine uh, your screen door and you put abrasives on it. And on the other side, you put a hook and loop backer. Essentially, that's what we have here. It's a mesh product. And it's got green on one side. So it's, uh, that was a poor analogy, but it worked. Um, I was thinking like, so what glue do I use and what abrasive grains do I use for this? I got a screen door. Yeah. Uh, you can't make it. We've already made it for you. <laughs> um, but it, it, that's essentially what it's like. It's got very fine mesh. So it's almost like the it's finer mesh than what the screen on your screen door is. And we've it's got the hook and loop backing only. And uh, the, the, the we don't typically make that with a hole pattern because with that particular product, uh, those those little bitty holes, the air and the dust flow right through it and gets pulled away. It's, uh, it's quite unique, works really well. Uh, it has a lot of really good applications, bare wood, plywood, veneer. Uh, you can even do paint and varnish. Uh, it doesn't load very much. Now, if you get into something real heavy and resinous, uh, like a really resin pine or um, you know, a really gummy paint, you might run into some, some issues there if you're trying to evacuate uh, you know, your dust. But other than that, really good product if you're looking for something unique to try in your shop and long lasting too yeah all the mesh uh squares give provides a lot of airflow which keeps the abrasive grain cool that's the whole thing about abrasives the more it heats up the the worse it's going to perform yep absolutely extremely durable price over performance usage Okay, sanding contours. So we have flutter sheets. Flutter sheets, typically you are going to build your own. You buy a mandrel. We've got a couple mandrel options uh, that are available. Uh, well, you can use a single stack, a double stack. And we sell more of our, we've got shown in the flutter sheet column, uh, the, the aluminum oxide red. Uh, we sell more of the gold for most of these applications because the gold has a much more flexible back to it. And it, it shapes to those contours much better. And now if you don't want to build your own, the Sanding Star is a great option. It's a four inch in diameter. I'm um, trying to think, I think it's like 32 stacks on it. So therefore it kind of gives you the idea of what a full size flutter sheet would do, which is uh, six by two inches. And I think it fluffs out to almost three inches wide, but at least it gives you an idea. It's a good entry level price point and a 15% off during the extravaganza. You can't go wrong. Yep. I've got the whole range of those in my shop. I, I typically use those, like I said earlier, on most of the projects. Sanding stars are a great little go-to to get started. And it doesn't look like it in the image, but both the sanding star and the flutter sheet, when you use them, they will fluff out and expand, which gives that's what really gets into those. And each of those little strips on the star and the flutter sheet, there's uh, four to six little small little slits that are perforated they're not already cut but they're just perforated and as you use them those little fingers will expand out and that's what gets into all the little nooks and crannies so well very good and uh <clears throat> we did have a comment here from angus uh he loves customer service from us uh, i myself helped him out um, after ordering a bandsaw and be ordering from now on thank you angus and I hope that ships it should ship pretty soon it looks like it's in november so hopefully you'll get that very soon. And yes, uh, Utah could use a store. Not saying it's not on the horizon. I'd move to Utah. <clears throat> if you could ski, Gary would be your best friend. And flap wheels, just to cover that real quick, mostly metal applications, some in the wood, but you're going to find that to be more of a very aggressive application versus the sanding stars and the flutter sheets are very soft. Oh, yeah. We get this a lot. Um, using a cutoff wheel incorrectly. So when you're using a cutoff wheel, let me go back. Uh, two things are going to really take place here. One is going to be the weight of the tool. That's, that's the actual, or sorry, the weight of the machine, the angle grinder, is all the weight you need when grinding something or cutting it off. If you try to push any harder, typically none of us can hold anything absolutely perpendicular to the workpiece. So therefore you're going to run into that as an issue. Looks good. Protective gear, gloves, glasses, ear protection. 
I personally use the uh, good old ISO tunes uh, whenever I'm doing my work. What about you? Uh, yeah, yeah, those two. That's very good. Danny here looks spitting in that sweet Klingspore jacket. We all want one. Uh, but make sure you uh, abide by all of the rules and regulations as far as the RPMs go. And all of the social media channels are here for your pleasure to definitely check out all of our in behind the scenes and small product glimpses of things that we do instead of just this entire video. Gosh, if you look at that, it looks like we're everywhere. Almost. So any questions out there as far as abrasives go, because we'd be glad to help. Coleman already likes the Utah store idea. That's good. Sign me up. That's it. Yeah, My says. wife would love me. She's uh, She loves to ski. Well, to move there, I guess kids are all grown. You're good to go. Yeah. All right. So let's take a look at the next product video while we're here. Is that the right one? It'd be just a second. Chris, why don't you tell them about our fantastic deals while I'm over here doing something else? All righty. Let me find uh, where that went to. Do, do, do. Way to throw that at me. <laughs> I figured you had that queued up. No, I wasn't prepared for that one. You know, it is the extravaganza. It here, is. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, I'll help you out here. How about we do a little bit of that? Sweet. Um, if that's not enough for you, Chris, we have this. Ooh. You want to see something? One more? Uh, Ready? Well, at least one more. There you go. I've got some easy wood. Hey, how about give me something in the 20% range? Uh, well, I can give you something in the 10% range. Oh, okay. That'll work too. Clean spore abrasives. Well, actually, that they're going to be the 15. Yeah, that covers the saw blades. Yes. So it's 10% off the clean spore saw blades and 15% off clean spore abrasives, router bits, and more. Mm. Sign me up. You are signed up, my friend. All right. Let's check out the product video. So this is mostly going to deal with some of the... Um, sanding discs again uh, but more towards the technical side of things as well as you may want to know more again number one question we get and it'd be for your application not everyone's application is the same again here we have the ps33 um, stearate aluminum oxide it is probably the most go-to grit 60 to 1500 available PSA and cling on and a wide range of applications. Yeah. And the beauty of that is, man, if, if you, if, no matter what your grit, whether you're looking for hook and loop or PSA, we've got you covered on all those fronts. Yep. And then we'll talk about the AZ plus. Uh, so if you have the 33 and then you want something more aggressive and very tough, then AZ Plus is for you, especially in the wood application. In metal, you can get a lot done with it without having to spend a lot of money on that ceramic. Bare wood only. Or metal. <laughs> this is how you sand a piece of walnut. And the new green tech talking aluminum oxide sterate with the T Act, which is a proprietary product. Well, once you use it, it makes all other abrasives green with envy. Remember, 60 to 240 grit is going to be on paper, and then 320 through 2000 is going to be on film. Ideal for all you people that are doing epoxy pours. Or if you're in the marine industry and need to sand all that gel coat. Because there's a lot of gel coat on our boat. <clears throat> Now, fusion foam is one of those that we didn't cover in the last video. Um, this is a very interesting material due to the fact that it's aluminum oxide in some grits and then silicon carbide in others, but it comes on a foam that's how many? It's five millimeters thick. Okay. And it's very similar to our Ultraflex pads. If you hadn't used our Ultraflex pads yet, you uh, should. Very similar to that. It's also very similar to our Hot Buy at five dollars. The ten pack of three twenty silicon carbide sanding discs, or sorry, uh, hand pads. Uh, the foam uh, on the fusion foam is considerably better. Yes. Not that this is bad, 
but this disc is absolute primo. The fusion foam material, that five mil foam, it's a dense foam, but it's just soft enough to still give, uh, which doesn't make it great if you're trying to level something, but if you're trying to create a beautiful soft finish, that product it works well. So if it's doing a bare wood, solid surface, uh, epoxy, uh, any of the resin materials, automotive. So you would say once it's leveled with a with a disc, that when you use the fusion foam, it helps polish it because it's a softer scratch due to the foam. Yep, it is available mm -hmm. as low as 120, but I typically recommend at least get everything flat up to about a 150, at least before you start that, that product. So let's take a look at one thing that's very interesting about fusion foam and that is the grits yeah we don't have a picture of the backing here we we'll do. have one oh we do yeah okay. in just a second you'll have a picture of it but the grits on fusion foam are ranged rather than a standard grit yeah so if the back says 120 150 there most people think oh so it's somewhere between that range no if you lower the rpms on your sander to where it's on Variable the lower speed, speed mm -hmm. then you're going to wind up closer to that 120. If you crank that speed all the way up, you're going to be closer to your 150. And that's definitely going to be more important when you get into those higher grit ranges because the span does, does slightly vary. And that really will help you. You can use one pad to achieve two different looks. And I've tested that. Uh, on some solid surface as well as some uh, some uh, epoxy and i was quite amazed at how how different that looked yeah so um, when you get up there i think there's a 2800 to 3500 so if you were to turn your sander let's say at six speeds on variable speed you turn it down to the one then you'd be dealing with like a 2800 and as you crank up two three it will start to slowly scratch more fine as you go up in speed so that's how fusion foam works. So if you ever see one of ours that's clean spore and it has, you know, a grit range, then that's based off a of variable speed sander. If it's not variable speed, it's going to be the higher grit. Yep. Glad we covered that. Fantastic product. Absolutely. I'm a huge fan of that. Lasts a long time too. True blue. This is a heat treated aluminum oxide that is good for all of your man-made products, such as plywood, MDF, particle board. What else you got? Uh, if you're trying to sand particle board or MDF products, I can guarantee you, you won't find anything better than that. That heat treated aluminum oxide makes that aluminum oxide grain just so super tough. And on those kind of products, it'll give you a really long life. And again, the uh, silicon carbide wet dry discs, we have that in PSA or hook and loop, which if you have no holes, you can get away with a little bit of water on the surface if you need to polish. Uh, but all common sizes, all common hole patterns, and you've got 60 through 2000 grit in a wet dry application. But remember, light pressure. Glass. What about the scuff pad or non-woven? Yeah, you typically find those a lot in the metal side of things, but they do have a place in the wood world. Uh, they're great for scuffing. Let's say you're trying to clean up your, your machinery. Uh, those are fantastic, especially the coarser and the, the medium for doing a lot of the rust removal or just general cleanup around the shop. The finer uh, uh, great range in that is great for just scuffing between coats. Sometimes you may not want to use an actual sheet of sandpaper or one of the foam pads. That's a great alternative to just give a really, really soft, subtle little scratch between coats finish. Sweet. Uh, um, I use it on the cast iron uh, table saw. That way, if I want to, you know, sand it down a little bit quicker without making it try to level it out, mm -hmm. just to kind of quick clean it up, that's good stuff to use. But if you're looking for a product that's going to leave you a nice grain on metal, non-woven's the way to go. So PS73 Extra Lube, as you can tell from the cascading lines here, that is the sterate coating on top. If you were using a product that has this on there, such as our latex, latex, tex. <laughs> easy for you to say latex, latex discs, 
Um, what you'll notice is that it starts out in this lighter blue color. And then as you use it, it starts to get to darker blue. It doesn't mean that the disc is worn out. It just means that the serrate applied on top has started to shed off. So we get that a lot of times where people say, you know, this did not last as long as I thought it was going to last. And when we ask them for a picture, so we can take a look at their application and the disc that they're using. And we see that this is the case. We ask them, so now that it changed color, do you think it has worn out or has it stopped performing? And they say, well, I think it's worn out. So just want to cover that one real quick. If you're using any of our extra lube products, which have a 73 on it uh, and a W, it does not mean that they have worn out. If the stereo has, has shed it off, it just means that the stereo is no longer there. So you may load up a little bit quicker. But other than that, the grain's still good to go. Yeah, something to keep in mind when you're using one of the, the 73 with the extra lube, sometimes that extra lubricant can reduce the amount of grain exposure that's that's available. So treat that a lot like the uh, PS11 or the silicon carbide and take a much easier pass with that. Don't try to be aggressive because what that does is it allows that stereo to do its job and minimize the loading of the grain. And it also allows for better wear of the grain as it as it the grain does get decreased in, in size and exposure. So just keep that in mind. Anytime you're using an extra lubed product or an extra layer of the stereo, treat it like silicon carbide take it real easy and and that would pretty much go for anyone's abrasive disc out there that's stereo coated because it's all kind of the same idea that there's an extra coating on there so let me address this real quick with dave is that he got a box of a competitor's net product i won't say what it is uh, as a gift but he hasn't tried it yet because he's curious if that's a competitor only thing or if we can support from who he actually likes take it back <laughs> So the cling net and the uh, Abra type net um, are similar products, uh, but we can help you even if you're using a competitor product on your application because that's what we want to do is to be there for you in customer service. We obviously wouldn't want you to use that, but if someone gave it to you as a gift and you feel that it would be bad to throw it out, then obviously we want you to go ahead and use it up so you can buy the better stuff. Yeah, and sometimes uh, I've done that where I've bought some stuff and then tested it and then used our product here. And I use that as a comparison because, you know, I, sometimes I'm biased with things that I say or use because, you know, I have good access to it. Mm -hmm. And I've tried a lot of other competitor abrasives. And there there's a couple of competitors that have some good products out there, but none that I've found that have good range and the consistency of what I get when I use the Clean Sport products. Yeah, so um, not only are we just the technical marketing guys for Clean Sports Woodworking Shop, but we try to dive in pretty deep when it comes to abrasives, try competitors' products out there. So therefore, when we get the question, especially our online chat, emails to the tech department here at Clean Sports Woodworking Shop, we want to make sure that we know what we're talking about, not just say we know because, oh, well, a book told us. No, we like to have hands-on actual R&D with our products. So therefore, we know, yeah, you know what? It's similar to it this way, but it doesn't act this way. And that's what we try to do for you. And he's he's the best finisher I know. I know two of them, but he's the best one. Oh, good. Who's the other one? You? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't call myself a finisher at all. No, my, Mike's been finishing for so long. He's got such knowledge when it comes to that product line. That, that he's been using all kinds of abrasives as well. So anything mm -hmm. we've got, he fully tests that out, removing finishes, between coats of finishes. And so he recognizes a lot of what happens when you do sand those things. So we, we're definitely firsthand knowledge people. And if we didn't like it and I didn't use it and he didn't use it, we probably wouldn't recommend it. Yep. I mean, when I say I switched over to the green tech, it wasn't just because it's new. It's because there is definitely some differences with it versus others that I've used already that I have in the cl in the closet, in the cabinet. Um, but no, when that, that is one cool thing about working with Kling Spore abrasives is that when they have a new product, they'll toss it out and say, hey, give this a try, throw something at it, let us know what you think, and then we give them a report on it. So at least they know that it has in-field testing before they put it in field testing. And I kind of like that. I think that's kind of fun part of the job. Yeah, I just wish we could constantly get free samples, but that doesn't work out that way. <laughs> Wait, you're only giving me five? Can you give me like 200? Yeah, and five. And five. <laughs> As you can tell, we try to have a little bit of fun with it. That guy looks really familiar in those yellow glasses. He's wearing a mask, so it's hard to tell. That's true. The body filler, the extra lube really does help out. Okay. This is a, uh, a CS310 and 311. 
I don't know why the blue is there, but the uh, it's more of a brownish aluminum oxide. Typically. So CS310 is going to be your closed coat and CS311's open coat. And I guess we should probably hit that real quick. Um, open coat and closed coat, there is some negativity to it out there. I've noticed in marketing with other competitors. Open coat doesn't mean that it's a cheaper product because it means that there's 50% grain coverage on the surface. And what that means is that it allows for areas for whatever you're abrading to load into without glazing over the abrasive grain. So in this case here, the CS311 is open coat, same uh, aluminum oxide type grain as 310. But with that open coat, which he, uh, Chris had mentioned earlier with the heavyweight products and our CS311 belts, that it gives you some area for loading to occur as well as a gap for air to occur. So when you're abrading, obviously heat's going to be probably the number one byproduct and also the negativity on any abrasive. So if you have an area for there to be an air cushion or a place for air to move, then that all helps out really well. The CS310 is going to be more towards the metal side or the hardwood side because it's closed coat. So it's 100% grain coverage across the surface. Very consistent scratch all, all the time, uh, but at the same time, there's no place for whatever you're abrading to load or to be removed into on the abrasive side of it. So you kind of have, it loads up quicker. Yeah, and typically what you'll find is the uh, open or semi-open products, they're going to be a little more aggressive. The closed coat's going to be a little better on the finishing side. Mm-hmm. And so all the other ones we were looking at, the Green Tech, the AZ+, Plus, the PS33, the 73s, all of those are semi-open coats. So they are a 50 to 75%, which is why they're great in discs, because the discs are required in a lot of different applications, wood, metal, you name it. So that's why those are all semi-open coat. Ooh, yeah. And the 311 in the disc world is typically used more on like your metal, big metal plate sanders, mm -hmm. um, the combo machines, but also in the smaller handhelds. So, and usually they're going to be sticky back on your platen sanding. So the heavyweight here is our PS29 material. And that's what Chris is mentioning. So if you have a CS311 belt, especially a wide belt, and you like the scratch that it's leaving, but you want that for your random orbit sander, the heavyweight is the same type of scratch, the same type of material with the same coatings, but it's on a Klingon disc for paper. And then also the heavyweight material, PS29, is also really widely used in the wide belt industry. Uh, 150 grit and up, would you say? Yeah. Works pretty good there. Um, so it's going to save you some money in the wide belt. So if you have a wide belt machine you're using cloth, did you know that you can get paper for that? Because there's a lot of companies that don't tell you that because they're only trying to make cloth belts. Well, Klingspore makes cloth, or sorry, makes paper belts as well for wide belt. And that's typically going to save you about a third. It's going to save a lot price. of money. Oh, yeah. I'm in charge, right? Ugh, craziness. Somebody is. This is a guy in a jacket. Well, at least he's married with a Bosch Sander. Yeah, I'm not going there. <laughs> Kling Spore Gold is our um, product that we use for metal sharpening as well as a lot of turning. Uh, in wood turning applications, this particular material has what's called a multi-bond lubricant. And that multi-bond lubricant is made more for metal to help keep the cool or the, the life of the abrasive cooler running. Uh, but what we found in wood turning is that it works really well whenever you are trying to sand anything in wood turning. So we offer the Klingspore Gold in sanding discs. We also offer them in scalloped. The beautiful beauty of us here at Clean Spores Woodworking Shop, we're not afraid to use things as they're not intended for. That's right. And we use this stuff on wood. And I'll tell you, that right there, any of your contour work, you'll be amazed at the life, the finish, and just the absolute performance of this product. Right? It is, it is just phenomenal. So this is the same material that we use in the flutter sheets and the sanding star. So it's, it's a very flexible J weight backing, cotton backing. So it's cloth. Egyptian. Egyptian cotton, yes, longer strands. Um, but at the same time, whenever you are, um, we have for sharpening belts, for instance, we call them gold sharpening belts. And so 80 to 400 grit, you have these sharpening belts. You can apply a lot more pressure and they run cooler than competitor belts because of that multi-bond lubricant. Yeah, and, and because it, the Egyptian cotton is so flexible, this is one of the only abrasives I've ever seen that you could do this, where you fold it backwards and bend it and it doesn't crush or crease 
the backing. So that means mm -hmm. if you're trying to sand into a, a tighter groove, you you're, this product enables you to do that. But in disc form, fantastic for all your general contour work, long life. It is a little more on the expensive side, but well worth it. Nicely covered. All right, cling net. Done. <laughs> But it's nylon impregnated with grain, um, velour on the back. Now, we will say that they, uh, all manufacturers now that make a net material do have a net protection pad for your sander. Uh, because the downside of sanding in what we find the, downs, the downside of the sanding industry, especially on discs, is that everyone's trying to push down on it like it's an angle grinder or a belt sander. Um, so usually if you're wearing out your backing pad using the cling on or sorry, the cling net or any net abrasive type material back off the pressure, you shouldn't be putting down nine to 11 pounds on a sander when you're sanding. Instead, you should be letting the weight of the sander take over with just a little bit of your hand pressure. It shouldn't take much. You shouldn't be laying your hand or your arm down as weight. It should be there to control the sander. Yeah, unless your sander weighs 11 pounds, there's no reason that it should have that much weight. That's right. So, um, it, but we do offer them, I think they're $5. It's, it's an inexpensive add-on for you. And it also gives you a little bit more cushion whenever you're sanding. Think of it almost like an interface pad, if you will. It's got the velour on one side to connect to your pad. And on the other side, it connects to the back of the disc. And even Festool has it for their sanders in their whole patterns. That's how much it means to them. So it's, it's widely known and accepted. It's not a big deal. Oh, well, the festival does it, man. <laughs> and not many people know, but we are a Dynabraid dealer. So if you're looking for a nice air sander, give us a shout. We can get you any Dynabraid uh, sander you might be looking for. Any of them. What about the downdraft table? Yes. Cool. So let's see what we have here in your comments. We apologize. We've been uh, watching this video. It looks like you need to order a couple of blades in the new bandsaw. If they are 10% off, they are. Sands a lot of domestic hardwood cutting boards, walnut, cherry, and maple with a five inch random over sander. What paper would you recommend? Well, it all depends on what grit you start with. Typically, my recommendation would be the PS36 uh, all the way up to, say, 120. And then from there, I step over to, like Mike said earlier, the PS33 and or the Green Tech. Yeah. Now, cutting boards are a little bit different of an animal. Um, but I think that the best thing that we have is right behind this jar of green liquid is the sanding sampler pack. Stretch. Yeah, a little bit. So the sanding sampler pack is 60 through 600 grit. You get five discs of each grit totaling 50 pack. And in there you'll find our blue AZ material, our green tech material, the PS33, the cling net, You'll find all of the more popular discs that we sell in one kit, and you can try them out. Um, the one thing I would highly recommend is that you do not sand past 180 for a cutting board. Any finer than 220 will burnish the wood or cause it to start polishing. So if you're trying to apply oil, you're not going to apply much oil. It's going to sit on the surface. It's not going to actually soak in. So if you can, try to sand up to 180 at 180 very lightly, and then go ahead and apply your oil. And here's another problem that uh, most people don't think about. If you're doing your surface grain cutting boards, that's one thing. If you're doing in-grain cutting boards, those take a lot to get those flattened back out and get that grain looking good. So that would be the only reason I recommend just no matter what kind of cutting board, because the surface grain is easy enough. But the in-grain, that PS36 up to that 100, 120 range, mm -hmm. it's aggressive enough to really cut through it and save yourself a lot of extra sanding time because of that in-grain nature. Yep. Well, let's see what else we got here. He uses our yellow hook and loop 5-inch. Last box he had has black, almost burnt-looking edges. They work fine, but the edges are, now, are so sharp now that it will slice you open if you're not careful. Is this normal? That, I believe, when you say yellow, that's sort of a tannish color. That would be our PS33. Uh, my guess is those discs were on the laser. They were laser cut. Uh, Cleanspore has, uh, last a couple years ago, got a laser machine to laser out some of the common discs, and that was likely one of those. Uh, sometimes uh, they can get a little too hot, but most of the time, I think by now, they've got that dialed in pretty well and the burnt edges should be minimal. And as for the sharp edges, yeah, that laser is going to leave a perfectly crisp edge. 
So here's the thing I have for you, Dave, is that we also offered an, an inexpensive called irregular discs, and they may have had a little bit more of a burnt edge from the laser when dialing in. So if you had gotten them from that, that's why they were least expense or a little less expensive than our standard PS33 no holes, uh, because they were um, kind of they were a little hot on the laser. So that's why they have burnt edges. But typically they don't have burnt edges on them. Now they are going to be sharp. There's no doubt about it. So whatever you do, treat it like a paper. Um, but at the same time, yeah, that's, it's not uncommon, but at the same time, that's why we had irregulars. Well, what happens is because of a normal disc that are punched, that, that cookie cutter die, if you will, as it punches that disc, it actually sort of gently curves that edge down. Uh, well, what happens is it creates almost a chamfer or a slight round over as it's creating that, that cutout. Well, the laser doesn't do any of that. The laser just cuts straight. And as it makes those cuts, it leaves a very sharp, crisp edge. And that's not always ideal for woodworking because it's, you know, if you get it up next to something, it could actually slice into the wood or I've even cut my hands on some of those before. So it's just one of those things that, uh, you know, you got to watch out for a little bit. Um, or, you know, if you have to have it a different way, we can, we can certainly look at options. Uh, if you have a hook and loop pad with holes in it, those are not laser punched at all. Those are not laser. Those are all punched. So anything with a hole in it is going to be done with a punch and should not have that sharp edge. Very good. So if you have any abrasive <laughs> questions, please feel free to comment in the video below in the comment section, and we'll be glad to address them as we can. Uh, but once again, thank you very much for joining us for our first virtual extravaganza, the 20th annual woodworking extravaganza brought to you by Kling Spores Woodworking Shop. I'm Mike Z. I'm Chris. And you guys have a great day. We'll see you at three with Izzy Swan. Ver